Hello and welcome back to another Space Engineers Showcase video. In today's video I am once again taking a look at one of your designs that you have linked me in the comments section of one of my videos. And today we're looking at something very risky that could anger Lord Clang to destroy this ship, the small starship Sturgeon, which uses both large and small blocks all the way around this ship. So they're all connected up by a rotor with a small head, which is quite a dangerous thing to be doing with a ship. So let me just come up and above and then we'll look at the block count. So that's it from the very top. It looks fantastic. So pressing F10 and finding the sturgeon. There it is. This ship weighs in at not 24,715 blocks. No, it's more like 10,000 blocks. If I just come and do this, there are some mods with it, but you don't have to worry about them as they were a mistake. This ship weighs in at 8,253 blocks. Now, that's both small and large blocks. It uses no mods. It does have some DLC blocks, but it's not too much of an issue if you don't have the DLC packs. There'll simply be a gap where those blocks would be. So starting at the very front, where I am standing are these small blocks. Yes, these small blocks basically cover up the very top of your bridge where you'll be driving your ship. Now these blocks come all the way across around here past these large blocks and towards the middle of the ship where they stop and a rotor is sitting right there. There is the small head. So that is how the entire front part is being held on. And it does look great how they've been put together, but I personally wouldn't risk doing this because God knows what would happen if I did. And back at the very front of the ship, if we look at it in a bit more detail, we can see we've got some tiny block ion thrusters and a camera attached onto it. So it does have some function other than being a pretty design. Below that and on the large block side, we've got this giant glass cover, which is going to lead into our main little living area where we can drive the ship as well. We see we've got the two DLC chairs, the DLC table and the DLC little desk parts all hidden away inside it. A little bit lower and underneath, we've got ourselves an antenna and a little rocket turret. I believe that is a rocket turret, but that is just sitting on a rotor and is the small ship variant. It's going to get a little confusing with this ship because we're going to be switching backwards and forwards between small and large blocks. But anyway, if I come over to the left hand side and start going around, we can see we've got a large block ion thruster and a large block atmospheric thruster for the up and the downs going across. So this ship can go both through space and through a planet. Now these are large block parts are being surrounded by some small block blocks. Hopefully that didn't confuse you. So if we come across to here, we can see we've got our Gatling guns, which have all been set up. You will need to manually fill these up via this cargo container over here, but they are surrounding the large small block blocks on the side of the ship. So there are the Gatling guns. There is our large block ion thruster. Then moving across, we've got some small block, small ion thrusters and we got the large block ion thrusters around the side. This is getting very complicated for me to say. I'm getting tongue-tied quite a lot. Yes, it is a neat way of hiding everything. So that is just surrounding that ion thruster. And we can see in there the rotor which is holding everything together. And it does look amazing how this has all been set up. If I come around to the back, we've got some tyres with a sound block on it. It just looks nice and neat there. And coming across, we return to our large blocks, but not before we go back to the tiny small blocks. We've got our conveyor, which moves across and it's been surrounded by some small armored blocks, which is also attached onto the small little lumpy part right here. So this is it all just some small block parts, which will be how we're going to get into the ship. Yeah, so that is the main entrance there, which will then loop across into the front but it's all made out of small blocks. Now, if I come all the way back through, we see that that has been attached on by the rotor up there. Again, it does look quite dangerous when you're looking at it like that, but it does seem pretty damn safe when you're flying it around. We then come across to our hydrogen thrusters. Yes, these are basically our main form of thrust to get us around through space and through planets. As we come further back, we've got our large, large block atmospheric thrusters, which are there 
mainly for decoration. They do have a little purpose if you're on a planet, but I think they're more for decoration because they do look good when you view it from a distance. Then surrounding them are, once again, the small blocks. So we've got some small corner blocks going across like that. Then coming across to here, we've got some rocket launchers and some more small blocks going all the way across with some small block hydrogen thrusters, which are all being hidden away inside here. Then moving across, we see the bottom of the large atmospheric thrusters and we come all the way back to a small large block hydrogen thruster. Towards the actual back of the ship, we just see some nice large block parts, which are the two large ion thrusters. We've got two normal sized hydrogen thrusters and a connector to connect yourself up. If we come through here, we've got some passages, which has a hydrogen thruster just hidden away in there, which is quite a nice way of hiding it up and making it look good. And then moving across to the side, we have the same story of what we saw on the other. Coming up and above, we got some more block work there to make it look all good. We've got some rounded dark blocks. We've got some sloped light blocks. And it's done in a way just to create a nice ridge pattern to go all the way across. We can see we've got some O2H2 generators. There are some reactors in there where you can just come past here and just go and feed them if you wanted to. Let's just come up to here and move all the way around. I believe there is a missing battery on that side, but... Still, it allows you to peer inside at all the gubbins of the ship. So moving towards the front, we got some catwalks on there, a interior turret, and there we can see the large blocks surrounding that small block part, which goes across to the front of the ship. Now if I come all the way down and underneath, past the antenna, which we talked about earlier, past the small rocket turret, which is sitting there, we can see some more detail. So there is another interior turret, I believe that's an interior turret. We can see some more hydrogen thrusters, the bottom of the atmospherics. We can see a jump drive with a window being placed all the way along. And towards the back of the ship, we can just see part of those large iron thrusters all sticking out all nicely. Then if we come across to here, we do have a small little cargo container with two arrows on it, which is how we're going to put ammunition into those rockets. Yes, so that is one way of putting ammunition into those rockets because you cannot do it from the interior of the ship. So you've got to make sure that you have all the resources ready before you set out or you're going to be high and dry when you enter combat. So with that all done and out the way, it's now time to get into my character and we'll go on the interior. Hopefully this hasn't been too confusing going around the side. It is quite hard to say in the sentence all about the small large blocks and the large small blocks and then you got the small small blocks and the large large blocks. It gets quite confusing. Also if you're interested in the background that is the Atlantis skybox. Yes to get inside this lovely ship we have to come to the very side here where we got some blast door doors. Yes so this is a little ramp that if I was to come and press this button it would deploy out and pistons would then extend. We'd get this another platform which will come folding down and allow you to just walk up it. Like so. We just walk along here and then we get onto the interior where we have a projector spinning around a little logo. We also have a sign there written on some LCD screens saying welcome aboard. And then we can come across to this button here and close it up. It does look quite risky, but I've tried this multiple times and it will always close flawlessly. So we are on the interior of the small block part. And if we go to the left, that will take us to the large block part. And on the right, this is how we can just access the gyroscopes, the jump drives and some cryopods. We do have a little store here. So if you wanted to have a contract on here and sell them to other players, you could just open up your door and let them wander in. So that is there if you wanted to play around with that. So coming back through here, because there's not too much to talk about in there, it's just mainly the hydrogen tanks and how everything is working, we do have a lovely little LCD screen of a piece of artwork. Yes, just a sky with some trees. Now turning off that button will turn off the projector up above there. Nope, oh, please hang a door, behave, we don't need to go through there just yet. But yes, that turns off the projector which just sits up there. And then we have two programmable blocks. If I would just enter them and edit, we have got something in there. Nope, I don't want to make any changes to that. And we've got another one over here, which I still don't know what that one is. 
not a clue, but I'm sure you just don't touch it and everything will be fine. So this is our little greeting room and we can come up these steps and a sensor will open up these hangar doors. So once this has all been opened up, it will reveal to us a traditional door for us to walk through. So let's just walk through here and then that will start to close up. We can open up this door, walk through and close it and now we're on the large interior which we saw at the very front. So with this large interior we've got a bunch of DLC blocks in here for you to live your life while you're flying through space. So here are the little desk chairs where we can view at a projector of this current ship and we've got a little projector table there if you wanted to change it to something else you could do. Moving across through here we've got another projector which is the subgrid thruster manager so that's how the little thrusters on the small grids are working and then we got our DLC kitchen to cook up our food an LCD screen above that showing us the floor plan and another LCD screen showing us our power so battery 3 is losing power and our reactor is draining all its uranium but it's not doing much around the back here we've got a button panel which is just to manually open up the hangar doors if I was to close that up and just come back through you don't have to press that button you can just walk up and press your face against it and it will activate the sensor so coming back through here and closing that up I can turn to my right and we've got our DLC toilet to sit in in front of that a DLC planter and another LCD screen which is telling you to please manually refill the Gatling guns rocket launchers interior turrets on the outside and small hydrogen thrusters so that is why there are those small cargo containers going around the outside. Moving towards the front, we got our DLC sofas to sit on and chill while flying through space. And above, we can see an LCD screen which is currently online. But there are these small blocks that just cover up the top of this area. Let's just hop around here and go into the flight seat. Bringing up my HUD, we got a few options. Number one are the Gatling guns on these small blocks on the side of the ship. So if I just turn that and face forwards, they all fire. Number two are the rocket launchers towards the back of the ship. They all fire together and they'll just shoot forwards. Number three is to turn off all the hydrogen thrusters on the ship. So if you just don't want to use it and rely on the ion thrusters, you can do. Let's just leave them on for the moment. Number four is to turn off the downwards hydrogen thrusters. Five for the up and number six are for the forwards. And then thrusters for the backwards turn off to cruise. So basically we just go like that, turn them off and we'll just glide forwards. Number nine is a block that I added on there because this ship is jump capable and there wasn't anything on this ship to allow me to jump from the cockpit. So yeah, we could jump 2000 kilometers, which is a fairly decent range. In fact, let's go for a jump right now while I talk about tab number two. On tab number two, we have got a camera to view directly forward. Let's view it like this. Whee, there we go. Jolly good stuff. And then number three is to view directly backwards. Coming to tab number three is another block that I added on there because I just wanted to check some things. So I will just remove that. That was simply to turn off the atmospheric thrusters because I did not need them. And that is basically it for its outside and what it can do. It's a bloody brilliant design with how the small blocks are being attached and the sheer look of it. It just looks amazing. But let's do a quick little thruster test before I lose my voice. And that'll be it. So going forwards, we've got a lot of speed going forwards. It's a fairly sizey ship, but it is really fast. Stopping as well is very fast. Look at this go down. Going left, not as fast, but it's still pretty fast compared to other ships I've done. And going right should be the exact same. Going backwards is pretty fast and then stopping oh I thought I saw some smoke there hmm, let's just reverse that it just might be clipping those small blocks there but I wouldn't worry about it yes going down fairly fast and going up is pretty fast as well wiggling my mouse around from first person view it's got a lot of weight to it so yes, I am just moving my mouse around. It's not as bad as the larger ships I have done recently. So you still got a fair amount of control, but it ultimately does suit this ship's size. And that is it for this video. I could do something horrible and just find all the rotors. Let me just go and find all the advanced rotors 
and just detach all the parts. I'm sure this is fine. Then I can just fly away. Oh god, we're losing all the armor. Oh wow, look at that. And we're just shaking off all the front parts. And yes, I've shedded off the armor and this is what we are left with. It was actually pretty cool releasing all that. If it wasn't for the front part bashing into everything, it looked pretty good. But anyway, I'm going to end this here before I destroy this ship any further. Oh god, oh no! The Oh god, I actually have to get out of this one and hopefully my boots are turned on. Oh, the projector doesn't like this. Let's just come through here. I'm going to have to manually open up this. Uh oh, activation failed. I'm going to have to break through this. There we go. So here is the entrance. The entrance is gone. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. But we can still walk around, so worst case scenario is you still can get to the contracts and the survival kit and the hydrogen thrusters and all that. But yes, that is it for this video. It's a bloody fantastic design and looks glorious, especially when you view it from a distance and when you're flying it in third person. So it'll be in the description below if you wish to download and play around with this ship yourself. I highly recommend you do, because it is quite a lot of fun to release all those rotors and lose all those little bits of small block armor pieces around you. So thank you all for watching, and I'll be back with another video somewhat soon. Bye bye.